No way. <laughs> okay, so we start learning linear functions. What is a linear function? A line. It's a line. But we're not going to keep in right equations of lines in tonight's homework. That's the <laughs> so, so, so what we're doing. We're not even going to write an equation of a line. We're just going to do basic things. Like here. If you have two points in the Cartesian plane. You guys understand when I say Cartesian plane? What the heck is the Cartesian plane? The Cartesian plane is the plane formed by the x and the y axes, right? But why do we call it the Cartesian plane? Because it's named after a famous famous mathematician. Cartesian. Cartesian. No, come on, people. Rene Descartes. And where did you hear of that name before? Art. Really? Art? Didn't his name come up in like the French Revolution or something? No, I'm not even sure about that. I had a D in the history, so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it's named after the mathematician René Descartes. He is the father of? The Cartesian plane. <laughs> analytic geometry. Oh. And what is analytic geometry? Because that's basically what we're doing in tonight's homework. You're going to solve geometry problems using algebra. That's right. So it's like the melding of algebra and geometry. So anyway, if you have two points in the Cartesian plane, how do you find the distance between them? You use the distance formula, which is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared, so the difference of the x-coordinate squared, plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared. And what happens if you're on a quiz or a test and you just can't remember the distance formula? What do you do? Average them. Huh? <laughs> what? What are we talking? Okay, let me give you a, 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 just a little prop. Okay, let's say you have a point here. Give me some coordinates. 2, 3. 2, 3. And then you have another point over here. Give me some coordinates. 7, 5. Wrong. 6, 6. <laughs> <laughs> How do I find the distance between them if I can't remember the distance formula? Yeah, you break it down into things you know. You make a right triangle like this. Right? How far is it from 2 to 6? 4. 4. How far is it from 3 to 6? 3. three. So 3, 4, five. 5. That's a Pythagorean triple. I love yeah. these Pythagorean triples in this class. Do you guys even know your Pythagorean triples? Well, if you were in my SAT class, we went over a lot of them, yeah? Yeah. In fact, what the heck? Let's do something right now. 3, 4, 5, 12, 8, 15, 7, 25. 7, 24, 25. These are like the four basic ones. Like you took trigonometry and algebra two honors, right? Did your teacher use these numbers? But there, are there more Pythagorean triples? You bet your bit be. There's an infinite number of Pythagorean triples. Do you notice there's a pattern to them? Yeah, Mr. Park, I noticed that this squared plus this squared equals that squared. Duh! Of course, that's a Pythagorean parallel. Yeah, but do you guys never notice, like, hey, when the first number is odd, there's like a pattern. What is 3 squared? What do 4 and 5 have to do with 9? Yeah, that's it. Right? Okay, what about 5? What is 5 squared? 25. What do 12 and 13 have to do with 25? Oh, that's dumb. They add up to 25. Okay, what about 7? What is 7 squared? 49. 49. What do 24 and 25 have to do with that? Yeah, I know that. It's just double. The third time. So, Mr. Park, when the first number is odd, you just square it. And then what consecutive integers add up to that, thing, right? So what if you had 9 then? What is 9 squared? 81. What consecutive whole numbers add up to 81? 
40, 41. Yeah, remember my teacher used those. 11. What is 11 squared? What? 121. I hope we know our square numbers up to 25. Well, we're going to test that very soon. 11 squared is 121. What consecutive numbers add up to 121? 60, 61. If I remember my teacher used that one too. Yeah, but if I'm going to test you, how about something like, let's do this then. How about 17? No, no, that's too easy. How about 21? Yeah, 21. What's 21 squared? Okay, 441, right? You guys just told me you guys knew it up to 25. No. I did. I asked and everybody went, yeah. Okay, 21 squared is 441. Do I, do I have to write that down? What consecutive integers add up to 441? See, so you can do it. As long as you can square that number then, right? Oh boy. But what happens if the first number is even, Mr. Park? There's a different pattern then, right? What, what is 8 squared? 64. What do 15 and 17 have to do with 64? It, it adds up to half. half of that, right? 15 plus 17 is 32. Isn't that half of 64? So what happens when the first number is even, like 12? What is 12 squared? 144. What's half of that? 72. What consecutive odd numbers add up to 72? 35 and 37. It's the part my teacher used that one. I'll tell you, give me a hint right now. I love to use this one. I like this. Okay. And then there are some Pythagorean triples that just don't follow these two patterns. Like the mathy people, you guys know this, right? 20, 21. <laughs> Call one more. Con. Cho. 22. <laughs> <laughs> Time out, ref. Okay, if we're going to just guess at something, let's make it an educated guess because this square plus this square got to equal that square. Well, if you square this, it ends in a zero, right? 400. Yes. If you square that, that's 441. It ends in a one. So when you add them together, the last digit has to be like a one. So you got to think like what number squared will end in a one. So I'd say 22 was not an educated guess there, right? 29. 29. Thank you. There you go. 20, 21, 29. Chen, did you have that one? I use this for math all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'll just tell you right now, I like to use these on my test quizzes. It's up to you. You don't have to memorize. You can just figure it out. But the more you know, the easier it makes things, yeah? Anyway, why are we talking about this? Oh, I know why. Because of will be here. You make the right triangle. But I would, ho I would hope everybody knows the distance formula, right? Does it, doesn't it come up on the SAT and things like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what's another thing we can do? Like if I have two points like this, can I find a point that's halfway in between? Yes. Yeah, what, when did we learn this? In geometry, right? This is called the midpoint, midpoint formula. So the coordinates of the point that's halfway between two other points in the Cartesian plane is given by? Wait, I see some people taking notes, you know. Everything is in the notes. It's in the notes, so you don't have to take notes. Whatever. Let's give Mr. Park, I like to do extra work. There you go. That's the midpoint formula. Does that look familiar? In other words, you just average the x coordinates and you average the y coordinates. Doesn't that make sense? If you want to find something that's halfway between two things, don't you take the average? Yes. Yeah, so it makes perfect sense. And then what about slope? Now, we're not going to write the equation of a line, but you've got to know the slope of a line. How, how do you compute the slope of a line? Change in y. Okay, change in y, change in x, rise over run, however you want to remember it. Remember it, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it's not enough to know that. You've got to know things about the slope. Like, what, what can you say about a line that, has, uh, that looks like this? Positive. The slope is positive. What about that? Negative. What about that? Horizontal? Not. No, zero. zero. It's zero. What about vertical line? Undefined. 
And then you gotta know the difference between, okay, if a slope is one, that means the rise over the run is one, like this. That's a 45 degree angle, right? What would happen if, like I said, the slope of a line is one half? Then it's gonna be less than 45 degrees, right? What if I said the slope of a line is three? You should have like a general idea. Something like that, right? Rise over run, three to one. Okay, what if I said the slope of a line, I'm thinking of a line, the slope is negative one fourth. What are you, what are you, what are we looking at there? Something like that? Yeah, yeah because then the rise over run, one over four, but then negative because it's going down. Okay, I'm thinking of a line, the slope is negative five. Yeah, it should look like something like that then, right? This is very important in calculus, you know. See, five to one ratio. Okay, I think for tonight's homework, that's all you gotta know. Isn't that easy? Okay, let, let me give you a problem now. How hard can this class be? All right, okay, let me give you four points in the Cartesian plane. Uh, uh, okay, point A, uh, uh, give me some numbers. One, no, two, wrong. Zero, zero. Negative two, <laughs> negative one. Okay, I gotta think now. Hey, hey. Point B is, what did I just say? Okay. Point C is, okay, what did I just say? Gosh, when you, when you get old, then you can't remember things. Huh? Her! What did I just say? Huh? Her! I think that's what I said. And then over here, Yeah, I hope I did that right. We'll, we'll see if it comes up. So these four points form a quadrilateral. Okay? Using only the distance formula. You can only use the distance formula. Determine what kind of quadrilateral this is. Only using the distance formula. <coughs> okay, so how should I start this problem? Yeah, find some distances, okay? Now, I don't know what you guys were expected to do in your other math classes, like you have to show all your work. You gotta show all your work. Okay, like, okay, who taught algebra two hours last year? Mr. Cropsey, Mr. Lumbach, that's it? Okay, what were you expected to do? You gotta go like, oh, to find A, B, I gotta go square root x minus x squared plus y minus y squared, and that's going to be the square root of... What are you expected to write down? Negative 8 squared plus negative 6 squared, and that's the square root of 64 plus 36, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. That's what you're expected to write down? Okay, well, well, how much can you step? Well, in this class, you can just do this. 10! <laughs> the more you can do in your head, the better. Okay, so let's practice. Okay, what about BC? Let, let, let's do some things in our head. 3 minus 6. Okay, then squared. Nine, put that, okay, so put that in one memory bank here. Nine minus five? Four. Four, squared. Six. Put it here, add the two together, nine plus 16. Six. 25, five. 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 there you go. You don't have to show all this, you can do it in your head. I should have made it come out uglier, yeah? I'll do that for the other class. CD then, do that in your head. Negative 5 minus 3. This takes practice, you know. Negative 8 squared. 64. 3 minus 9. Negative 6 squared is 36. 64 plus 36. 100. Square root that. 10. 
Now, if you can't do all of this in your head, then just write it out. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, but this part is just the arithmetic part. We all know how to do arithmetic. Well, we'll find out in the first quiz. And then AD. How about just doing this? What's the difference between these two? Three. What's the difference between those two? Four. Three, four. Five. Five. Pythagorean triple, right there. Okay, so looking at this, what can I conclude? If the opposite sides are equal, this has to be rectangle. Eh, come on, remember your geometry. It's a parallelogram. But it could be a rectangle. Like all we know right now, it's a parallelogram. So, but how can I test to see if it, it's, it's a rectangle? Okay. Look at the diagonals. Okay, so let's compute the diagonals. AC and BD. Okay, now the challenge will begin. What is AC? Okay, what's the difference between negative 2 and 3? Negative 2 minus 3. Negative 5 squared. 25. Negative 1 minus 9. Negative 10 squared. 100. So 25 plus 100. Root 125. Simplify. 5 root 5. Mr. Park, what if I left root 125? Ah, that's probably good enough. Yeah. Uh, higher up in math you go, you know, you really don't need to simplify radicals and fractions. In, in fact, when you take the AP exam next year, you rate 125, is that good enough for the AP people? Yeah. If you have a fraction, 4 over 8, is that good enough for the AP people? Yeah. You don't need to reduce it. That's like more like an algebra 2. You need. The higher up you go, you don't need to. However, since we are Iolani, I expect you to simplify. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about BD? Here's BD. What? Negative 11 squared. 121. Negative 2 squared. 4. What's 121 plus 4? 125. What's the square root of 125? 5 root 5. Hey, monsieur, the diagonals are equal. So what can we say? That's a rectangle. So you gotta, you got to investigate everything. Okay, now we're going to do the same problem, except we're only going to use slope this time. Or, okay, by only computing slopes, can I figure out what kind of uh, quadrilateral this is? You bet you're busy, you can. Okay, so what should I do first? Compute some slopes. Okay, so let's compute the slope of AB. Now how do you do that? y minus y over x minus x. Can we do that? Or your brain is just rusty from the summer? Don't worry, that's why you have homework. You're not expected to do it during the lecture. You've got to practice. Right? The, like the, uh, this is the first time I'm playing basketball, and I'm right-handed. I can dribble right-handed. How do you dribble left-handed? What are you going to have to do? Practice. OK, no further questions here. You've got to practice. So let's see if we can do this. 5 minus negative 1. 6. 6 minus negative 2. 6 over 8. Are we expected to reduce? Yes. Oh, yeah, you're expected to do that. Otherwise, I, I, I just take off one point for that, but don't you want to get a 100 instead of a 99? Mr. Park, I'll take the 99 right now. Yeah. What? What's the slope of BC? Y minus Y over X minus X. 4 minus 4 over Negative three, negative four. negative four thirds. Hey, Mr. Park, I see something. Negative reciprocal. If, if slope, okay, well, first of all, let's remember our algebra one. If two lines have the same slope, parallel. If negative reciprocal? Oh, so we just figured out AB is perpendicular to BC. Okay. Now let's do the slope of CD. 9 minus 3 over 3 minus negative 5. 6 over 8. That's 3 fourths. Oh, negative reciprocal. In fact, look, these two are the same, so it's parallel. Something's happening here, right? And then finally, what is the slope of AD? Okay. 3 plus 1 over negative 5 plus 2. 
do we really have to write it up? 3 minus negative 1 all over negative 5 minus 3. Now, if you have to do that, fine. Come on. 4 over negative 3. Negative 4 thirds. Hey, negative reciprocal, and it's the same as that. So these are all perpendicular. This is parallel to this. This is parallel to that. So what can I conclude? It's a rectangle. But it could be a square though, right? Because we did, we're not using the distances anymore. We're just looking at it. So it could be a square. So what should I do? It rhymes with diagonals. You check the diagonals. Because if it is a square, what, what can you say about the diagonals of a square? They're going to be perpendicular to each other. So you should also check the slope of the diagonals, which is AC. Now, should I start calling up people? OK, I will. But I don't know everybody yet, so the math team people are going to end up being called up. Call up yeah? Chen, <laughs> what's the slope of AC? Okay, and what's the slope of BD? Cho? Uh, one, four, two, three. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. two, two, two elevenths. That is correct. So, are these perpendicular to each other? No, they are not. So, this is a rectangle. See, isn't this kind of fun? Yeah. All right, let's do one more problem. I think one more problem enough, yeah? Some of you guys are tired. How are you going to even get through this day? Don't worry about that later, Mr. Park. <laughs> okay, now you guys have a, what did you guys use your calculator for last year? You guys use graphs, compute numbers like 2 plus 5. What about storing numbers? You guys don't even know how to store numbers? <coughs> okay, let me give you a problem. In fact, this is a problem from tonight's homework. Okay, let's say you have a triangle in the Cartesian plane. Okay, what are the coordinates of A? Negative 3. Negative 5. Okay, you guys got it that time. Okay, and here's point B. Give me some coordinates. <laughs> no, wrong. Zero. No, wrong. Seven. Seven? Twelve. No, negative Four. one. Okay, well, here's point C. Now look at the placement of it. What do you think? Four. Four. Negative Four. Three. It's three, and then? Okay, it's seven. There you go. Compute the area of this triangle. Okay, let's go to back to geometry. Huh. How do I find the area of a triangle? One half base times height. Okay, so if I take this to be the base, I can just use the distance formula for that, right? But how do I figure out this height right there? Height is perpendicular. How, how do I figure out that? Height huh? by that green theorem? No. What? With what though? No. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this? Yeah. Okay, how do I know what that is? You <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can use the distance formula to figure out that. But to figure out this, you would need to know this. Yeah. Well, how, do I, how do I get this? Oh. I can figure out that. How do I figure out that? Oh, it's just half, Mr. Park. <laughs> no, it's not half. You can't. Look at the thing. I'll tell you right now, it's very difficult to figure out this size, but you're going to do it in either Lin Quad 2 or 3. Not yet. So is there another way I can figure out the area with just the tools that we learned today? 
Yeah. You yeah. bet your bippy. If you were in my summer school class, come on, I taught you this. Chin in. I don't remember. <laughs> See, right there, that was the time to impress me. <laughs> you impress me, then I remember it, and then when I write your junior evaluation, I just like, you're brilliant. You guys know what a junior evaluation is? No. Okay, how many of you are juniors? Almost everybody, right? At the end of the year, your counselors are going to ask for the, every one of your teachers to write an evaluation of you so that they can write your letter to send to the colleges that you apply to. See, some, some colleges, you have to get like two letters of recommendation from teachers. But then you also need a letter of recommendation from the school. And that's where the junior evaluation comes in. Don't you want your teacher to say, brilliant? Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to, meh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys want the meh? <laughs> See, so when I call on you, that's your chance. You can be brilliant. OK, somebody had a suggestion here. Was it Aaron's formula? Okay, that's one way, he runs formula. But there's an even an easier way than that. Okay, let's pretend we don't even know, we never even took geometry. Let's say we're in, when did, when did you guys first learn how to plot point? Pre-alge. Pre-alge, right? Okay, let's say we're in seventh grade, or some of you earlier. Uh, how do I find the area of this triangle if I only know how to plot points? Put a rectangle around me like this. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> and so, how do I get the area of this triangle here? You compute the area of the whole rectangle, and then you subtract these three right triangles around it. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. Yes, see, common sense. Okay, so let's get the, the, how far is it from negative three to seven? Really? 10. How far is it from negative five to negative one? Four. How far is it from negative 1 to 7? 8. How far is it from 3 to 7? How far is it from negative 3 to 3? And then how far is it from negative 5 to 7? Now, does that make sense? Look at the picture. Yeah, 8 plus 4 is 12. 6 plus 4 is 9, so it makes sense, yeah? Because some of you, you guys just do things that you don't even check to see if it makes sense. Like some of you would do something like that, and they go, oh yeah, that looks good. <laughs> no, that's impossible. <laughs> hey. That's another thing you guys got to learn in math. You guys got to, when you get an answer, is this answer reasonable? I never worried about that before, Mr. Park. Well, you're going to have to start worrying now. Okay, what's the area of the entire rectangle? 120 <laughs> minus, okay, what's the area of this triangle right here? One half base times height. And then what about this one right here? One half base times height. Minus this one here. One half base times height. 36. So what do we got? 120 minus Chen. Redeem yourself. <laughs> Somebody fed you that answer? 72. Final answer. 48, everybody agree? Okay, that's pretty nice, that's a pretty nice answer. See, so like right there, you just use the, with the tools you got, right? But the more tools you have, doesn't it make the problem easier? Now, somebody mentioned Huron's formula. In fact, in tonight's homework, one of the problems says use Huron's formula. So that means you gotta know it. Well, what's Huron's formula? In fact, who's Huron? Okay, when did you guys learn Huron's formula? No, 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 no. You learned it in geometry. Yeah, Huron of Alexandria. If you know the three sides, if you know the three sides of a triangle to compute that, this is a really useful formula. We can use Huron's formula to compute the area, and the area is kappa equals. This is not k, now, This is the Greek letter kappa. Usually, we use that to designate area. Square root. Oh, there you go. Square root. S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Now it's coming back like a bad dream, right? <laughs> what is S, Mr. Park? Semi-perimeter. In other words, half the perimeter. So S is equal to A plus B plus C over 2. Okay, so now let's do this problem using Huron's formula. 
Okay, so we got the triangle. Let me just draw a, the, the, the rough sketch of it. What do we, what do we got here? Negative 3, negative 5, 7, negative 1, 3, 7. Okay, let's compute the three sides of this triangle. Okay, I'm going to call on people. A, B, con. Yes. Okay. Enough stalling. Okay, seven minus negative three. And since we're going to be using our calculator on this, just leave root 116. No need to simplify. Okay, what about BC? Kawamura! Uh, <coughs> root 80. Yeah. And then AC. Sito! Um, <laughs> what was that? Nothing. I said shoot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is your time to shine. Um, what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> Enough stalling. What is the length of AC? On the left. Okay. Um. Yeah, this, okay. This is what I do. I go look at the x coordinates. What? Are, what's the difference? Six, right? Okay. Look at the y coordinates. What's the difference? Twelve. So you just gotta go six squared plus twelve squared. Thirty-six plus hundred forty-four. Mr. Parker can't carry it in my head. Good 180. Very good, Sito. Okay, now throw that into Hiran's formula. Mr. Park, these numbers are so ugly. So what is S? A plus B. Root 180 plus root 80 plus root 116 all over 2, right? Okay, and then you throw it into the Huron's part. It's not part, there's so many radicals. The answer could come out ugly. No, it's not. Look at that. How is it possible you get all these ugly radicals and then you put them together, it's going to come out to 48? Well, it is. Okay, but tonight, you get to use your calculator on this problem because I want you guys to learn how to store numbers. Okay, let's practice storing numbers. Take out your calculator. And if your calculator is broken, just watch and try to learn. Do you have a charger? Do I have a charger? Yeah. I do. Can I borrow it? <laughs> yeah, here it is. Okay. 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 okay, here is my calculator. Can I expand this to make it bigger? Okay, can everybody get into the home mode? You guys know how to get to the home screen? If you press the house, the home button right there. Okay, let's do the first one. Uh, what's the first one? Root 180. So you go square root of 180. Right click, enter. Actually, you don't really, really need to enter it, but just might be curious on what that number is. Yes. Okay, now how do you store this? Now, let's make it simple. I think there's more memories, but let's just say that there's 26 memories on your calculator. And what do you think they are? Since it's 26. A through Z, that's right. So if I want to store this into A, what do I do? You see this STO, that means store. Store it. And then all you do is select a letter from A to Z. I'm going to call it, see, you see this alpha button here? Alpha A. And then you press enter. So that means from now on, whenever you input A on your calculator, your calculator is going to plug in the square root of 184. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's do it with the other ones. What's the next one? Root 80. Root 80. So you go square root 
80, right arrow. Now, you, you can store it right away, but I like to see what the number is. Let, let's try to guess. Let's try to guess what the number is. What is it going to be? 3 point something, 4 point something. Tell me what to stop. 5 point something, 6 point something, 7 point something, 8 point something. 8 point something. 8 point something. 8 point what? Yeah, you guys saw it first. Store it into, and then let's go alpha B. So that number is now stored in B. Okay, and then finally, what's the last sign? Root, I can't even read it from 116. So you go square root 116, right arrow. Okay, what is this? 10 point something, 11 point something? 10 point something, you are correct. We're going to store this into alpha C. Enter. Okay, now, what else do we need for Huron's formula? We need S, the semi-perimeter. So how do you get the semi-perimeter? Okay, so this is what you do. You go parentheses. Notice that you get both parentheses at once. Then you go alpha A plus alpha B plus alpha C, right arrow, divided by 2. We don't need to see what this is. I'm going to store this right away into S. S. Alpha S. Enter. You, you have to press enter, otherwise it doesn't get stored. Now, all you have to do is punch in Huron's formula, which is? Hello? Oh. Square root. I have it written S. on the board right there. Alpha S times? S minus. Alpha S minus alpha. Alpha A. Hey, where's the right parentheses? Oh, it's right there. Gotta go right arrow. Times, then you gotta do another parentheses. Alpha S minus Alpha B. Right arrow. And then finally, parentheses. Alpha S minus Alpha C. Right arrow. Is that? Did I punch it in correctly? Yeah. Okay, now press enter and we should see what's the answer? 48? Please, 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 please. Syntax <laughs> error. Oh, ooh. Okay, I think I know what it is. I think we gotta use the time sign. Yeah. Okay, how do we get rid of this error? Escape? Okay, so that means I have to put a time sign in there. This is a good lesson. Times. Times. Okay. Enter. There you go. Hey, Mr. Park! That's not 48. <laughs> the thing says 47.99993. Yeah, but you gotta be aware that your calculator, when it crushes numbers, is only correct in like six decimal places. Okay? So what happens when you round that to six places? You get 48, that's right. So even though it doesn't look like 48, it is 48. Just like I remember last year, this was on a quiz, you know. I should tell you guys now. Let's see if anybody remembers in the third part. The answer on their calculator was uh, 5.374 times 10 to the negative 19. So that's what they wrote in their paper. And guess what? That's wrong. Well, you know what it is? Come on. You guys are honors. Zero. That's zero. Okay, what does negative 19 power mean? That means move the decimal 19 places to the left. Tell me what to stop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There. You round that to six places, what is it? Zero. It's zero. Okay, let's see if anybody's going to remember that in third quarter. Because you're probably going to see that on their, your calculator since they did. Okay, so that's all you need for tonight's homework. Is, is this kind of fun? Hey, Mr. Park, in this class, we learned a lot about the history of mathematics, too. That's right. In fact, what mathematicians did we talk about today? Huron. Huron. Descartes. 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 And I also mentioned. Renee. Who? 
Don't worry, in this chapter there's a lot of mathematicians. Okay, so what do we do when we finish early? Yeah, yeah we usually play a game. But, oh. Can we play a game today? Yes. Yeah. Then you're going to expect it every time. When, did this, when does this class end? Wait, 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 this class ends at 25. We only got one minute left. Oh. What class room is the calculator? Oh, W213, this is Yonashiro if you need help with your calculator.